Hey there, Mikey Scrooge, good friend Michael here. We're at the Midwest Gaming Classic. There it is behind us in the Wisconsin Center. And there's Kathleen. She's wearing her Animal Crossing mask and the double jump hat today. I'm wearing short sleeve shirt, double jump shirt. And no, it is not warm enough for me to go out here short sleeve, but I'm gonna be in the convention hall. It's gonna be warm in there. So I decided I'll take off my jacket now. Um, I, have, gonna... I have a double jump shirt on, but it's black yeah. like this. I'm going to uh, hopefully find a lot of games, um, meet Phoenix Resale, uh, Caleb, and hopefully meet John Riggs at some point. It's going to be a blast today. Can't wait to have some fun. So let's get in there. So we made it inside the convention hall. Look, I met a friend. One second, John. This is my friend Austin hey. <laughs> from, from high school. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, it's definitely been a minute. Absolutely. All right, see you guys. Have fun. Right, you too, Austin. Yeah, I went to high school with him, and we're now going to head up the stairs to go to the vendor hall and buy some games, and I'm probably going to break my bank. <laughs> here we are in the vendor hall. I'm going to be looking for John Riggs in here. I'm guessing this is where he's got to be at at some point. We're going to walk around and find some stuff. So uh, Kathleen and I are sitting down for lunch now. Well, we've been sitting down for quite a few minutes. Um, had a lot of fun walking around the vendor hall, looking for stuff. I was gonna lay the camera standing up a little bit, but it wasn't working. Kathleen had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun walking around. We got a bag full of stuff. Um, see that bag underneath the table right there? If I can see, there it is. There's maybe a little preview. <laughs> of what we got in there. We'll show that off later when we get back to the hotel, but the bag is like full. It was empty when we walked in. It is now complete, completely full. Here, I'll show you one thing already. This is not in the bag, but Kathleen bought a Animal Cross puzzle. And I didn't, I didn't bring it back myself. No, yeah, Kathleen didn't bring it back. She bought a couple of games as well, and we'll uh, talk about those. But... Yeah, we had a lot of fun. We walked around. I'm surprised like it didn't take us so long to walk around. I guess it is a little bit more spaced out this year. So that's probably the reason why maybe there aren't as many vendors. Um, and maybe there's not just as many people too. I'm not completely sure. I don't know attendance numbers. But we met uh, Caleb who runs the Phoenix Resale Channel. That was really cool. And like I said, we're going to be going to his presentation later at 5 o'clock. And then just, ha just happened chance. Um, that was actually just happen chance as well. We were um, coming back to grab lunch, which I got chicken tenders, Kathleen got a hot dog, and we met John Riggs. Was, so that was really cool because I was like, ah, where's John? I've been like the whole, like the whole time walking around the vendor, I'm like, where's John Riggs? Where's John Riggs? <laughs> Can't find him. And then just happen chance find him. I was, saw his curly hair and saw he was tall. I'm like, that's him right there with, and with the glasses too. So really cool to meet him. We got a picture with him, we got a picture with Caleb as well, so I'll be posting those to social media. I'm gonna walk around after lunch, film a little bit of the vendor hall. I didn't wanna do it while I was buying stuff because I, it felt like it would take a little bit longer, so I'm just gonna kinda of give like a quick glimpse of the vendor hall, and then we're gonna walk around and look at some more stuff. There's Kathleen just over my shoulder. Oh yeah, and Kathleen bought uh, some Amiibo cards as well. Um, so we'll... Yeah. Yeah, they're sitting in her pocket, so we'll show them off a little bit later. Also, by the way, I got a beer to drink. So maybe I'll be a little bit loopy for the rest of the video, too. <laughs> I gotta know, what's inside the mystery barrel? <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go around filming now a little bit here at the Midwest Gaming Classic in the vendor hall. We're back in the lunch area right now, so nothing exciting back here. But um, we've been walking around here. I almost forgot. I was gonna sing that. for the first time in forever. The frozen song. Uh, here of the dog cast. I believe that's there over there on the stage. I'll try to go through really quickly here. And Nailbuster is kind of the only thing. So this isn't such a long clip. But you got like Funko Pops um, here in the back along with a lot of
So much more in there too. <laughs> Some cool stickers and lots of uh, people selling stuff. I'll try to walk up and down some. I'll try to walk up and down like every aisle, just so you can see some of like the the bangers. I guess you would say <clears throat> for some really good games. Big old Pikachu head there. Maybe I'll see John Riggs again. <laughs> he was dressed up as Robotnik the last time I saw him too. Lots and lots of uh, Pokemon plushies. I did buy a plushie earlier. It was a um, a Daisy one, and from a vendor whose uh, store is in Bowling Green, Ohio. Sorry about that. It's a tabletop stuff up here. We'll walk this way. Two squad socks, how about that? <laughs> Didn't see anybody from the Portland Retro Gaming Expo this year, but of course they didn't have it the past couple of years, so that's probably why. Lots of plushies here. This was not the booth we bought from. Got a Pikachu walking around. I got a picture with Kathleen with that. You'll see that on social media. Um, actually, I'll probably walk this way next since we got some cars here. Got the Ectomobile. There's the slider. <laughs> you see me in the video with the mask on, and I totally forgot to put mine on while walking around here. Got lots of cool. Looks like these are drawings. This is the uh, Wayne's World car. There's really nobody in there. <laughs> Game pawn. Here's some uh, vehicles from Jurassic Park. The motorized vehicle, and then the one where they had the guided tour. And now I'll go over to the other side, and you'll see some other stuff as we walk down. They're really out of place, T-Mobile booth. <laughs> More plushies, games, and consoles. I mean, here's the thing: if money was not an issue. I would buy everything. <laughs> Not okay. I shouldn't say everything, but everything on my list, I buy. As you can see, look at this case. Knuckles, Chaotix, Bucky O'Hare, Zelda Gold cartridge. Lots of good stuff in there. Gunstar Heroes. We saw like a bunch of people selling plushies, so I was just hoping to run across the Daisy one because that's really like the last one that we're like looking for for our like plushie collection because I've got one of all the characters I want and I'm not going back around actually looking for any more games um, I've spent my money <laughs> so yeah bought some stuff from these guys earlier Oh yeah, those guys are right here. They yeah, just got music playing. <laughs> awesome. The retro dimension here, they really had bangers in their cases. Lots of bangers. Some, uh, some games as well. Black Sega Dreamcast. The Sega Sports Edition. And then this is up near the front. So nothing really. Well, there's looks like some wrestling matches going on out there. 
I'm not into wrestling. Though. This was the first stop we actually did right here. If I can get the game's name of the store in here. Respawn Retro Games. They were the first booth that we stopped at and bought some stuff right away. And they got lots of uh, Japanese games there as well. Lots of box stuff. Plushies. Lots of cool glassware. Here. This is like the Paper Mario. There's the Star Trek ones right there. I think she said those were like all sandblasted too. Some more great games here. Sorry if I'm kind of just glossing over everything, but trying to move pretty quickly here just so this isn't a long clip. More, more Ghostbusters guys. Looks like comic books over here. More games. There's a Vectrex. It's pretty cool to see. And it's working too. There's a guy selling really cool posters. Oh, uh, no, that was the, I'm looking over there. That's the drawings, not the posters. Actually, I meant to walk down the other side, so I'm gonna go walk over there since we already went down this side. But there was somebody that was selling really cool posters. And I think I missed them and they were up toward the front on the left and I don't really want to walk back over that way. Just walk down the last side here. Just to show off everything. Lots of games back there. Almost running. I'm almost running into everybody because I'm walking backwards. And there were definitely some games I passed over today I could have bought. Even some like cheap ones. I think I stuck to my rule of everything $20 and under. But I'll have to, we'll, we'll see when I do the pickup video. Cool posters there. Miss yeah, Pac Man. Well, I mean, it's a good for So the more love it gets, the happier I am. So. Got some mini arcades to play over here. This clip's almost 10 minutes long. <laughs> really cool posters here. So I guess I get to see some. Look at that Sonic. That's cool. I don't have any room on the wall for any more posters, or else, you know, I would consider getting some of some others from my favorite series. Alright, so that. That's it for the tour of the vendor hall. We'll walk around later and film some more stuff. Oh, I should show these off too. These little uh, balloons. It's like Yoshi. And it looks like you got a Tigger there too. Those are cool. Alright, see you in a little bit. We're outside the vendor hall now. You got like uh, people that play music up there. There, was, there were people, uh, I don't know if it was wrestling or not, if it was like they were hitting each other with sticks or something. Yeah, that was pretty cool right there. You got Garcade right here to play SNES Classic and like N64. You got the mini putt. Looks like this is like Artist Alley. There's like a lot of artists here. And sorry if I don't show off everything like really, really well. And there's a lot of people walking around too. These are really cool right here. Look at this. It's like Peanuts characters as like other characters in video games. And you can guess which ones they are. So this is the big hall that has all the arcade stuff. 
in it. There's also video game tournaments in here. This will be the stuff that we'll, uh, we'll really film tomorrow. So I'm just going to kind of give you like a sneak peek of what's going on. You can see like gaming library or gaming museum, I should say, video game tournaments. Um, yeah, and the reason why we're going to do it on Sunday really is because the second day of the convention, more people are here for Saturday than Sunday. That's why we're doing it the second day. But we're just going to kind of walk around and take a look at stuff over here. The thing I, I'm going to do is just a little bit more filming here. The thing I really like about this this year, the thing I really like about this this year is that they turned a lot of the lights off in here. Before it was all lit up, but now you get more of the feel of being able to play, you know, these arcade games in the more, you know, when it's more dark in here. And I think that's really cool. It gives it a lot, a lot more atmosphere that you like, and you get to see more of the lights than you would if this thing was completely lit up. Plus, you have to play a little basketball here. Like they teach you how to build like your own uh, console, it looks like. In here. So it looks like it's from my built bit community for all things console modern related. So, like, mind your console, maybe build some. Pretty cool. Got an air hockey place over here. There's like a professional tournament, and I think there's an amateur on a Sunday. You got a couple of kids playing right here. Oh, there's a goal. <laughs> if I played the professional, they'd probably blank me. That's all I have to say. It wouldn't turn out very well. This next one is Guys, Games, and Beer. I love Kathleen behind. More games in here to play. Pretty cool. Not as dark as the, uh, the arcade one, and that's fine. Oh, cool! Definitely just pointed out a pack. That's pretty cool. Don't know if there's any games in here. Maybe I want to play. Pretty sure with the driving wheel, I wouldn't do that well. 
now playing Holy Valley here. Love that game. Love light gun games. Those are, those are the best. Lots of fun. Pong. Metal Slug. Playing Scoop Shot. Steel Battalion. Man, I would probably probably do terrible at that. I'd be like, what's the controls? <laughs> Playing Quake on the computers here. We got old style Nintendo and Super Nintendo. Yeah, lots of different cool things in here to play. I am going to attempt to play Steel Battalion. Which, if you don't know what that is, let me show you. You got this big controller in front of you. And you got pedals even on the floor down here. So, this is going to be interesting. I've never played this before. I wouldn't even have a spot to put this in my game room. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. So, I had fun playing Steel Battalion. Um, I got one kill at least. Big learning curve for that game with the huge joystick and everything, but it was definitely a lot of fun to play. Um, Kathleen helped me shift while I was shooting weapons and moving around. It took me a while to find anybody, but eventually I did, and so that was cool. And there's only really a couple other things to show you guys here, and then we're, I think we're gonna head back to the, we said we were gonna do the arcade tomorrow, but I think we're gonna do some of it today, because it's right now it's like 3.36. And we got a little less than an hour and a half before we go see Caleb for that's uh, Phoenix Resale. <laughs> Jeez, I, I hope I got that right. I'm pretty sure I did though. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna go see him talk, and uh, then we're probably gonna call it a day. And then tomorrow we'll I'll show you more of the arcade, um, and we'll play in there probably all day until the convention ends, which tomorrow it's like 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. It runs. One other thing in here is there's a big Magic the Gathering and a tabletop RPG game section that goes on. <laughs> yes, yes. That's what this whole room is dedicated to. So there's something for everybody here, you know. So I, I Magic, our tabletop games, video games, arcade stuff. So yes. great for everybody. One other thing I wanted to show here was this big Midwest gaming classic. So cool. It's got so many different like little like nods to all these different video games in here. We're in here getting ready to listen to Caleb give us some gaming tips. I'm excited. I hope I learned something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I will. I can learn uh, how to hunt for games better than what I usually do. I've been on YouTube for like a year and a half. Um, been collecting, I, I collected in childhood, but have gotten, re gotten back into it in the last like couple years or so. Uh, I collect pretty heavy for uh, like the Switch and recently have been doing GameCube as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thrilled to be here. You mentioned you had something you wanted to. That's right, yeah, I've got a little bit of a uh, giveaway Ooh. for anyone, if there's anyone in here who uh, is familiar with my channel, I thought that I would do a little bit of Phoenix Resale trivia. Anybody up for it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Rick, collecting has changed. Because it used to be such a cheaper hobby, um, it used to be a lot more accessible, so I think that's the big downside. Um, the upside is I think there are tons more people in the community. So there's a lot, there's a lot more interest. It's a lot easier to make friends, um, but I think that's a big reason why more and more people are using flipping games as a means to have the income necessary to collect some of the games that they want the most. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely different. Have you guys found any good deals here at the show? Anyone want to share some guys? What you guys pick up? Anything you guys want to share? Go ahead, go ahead. Context, sure. right? Because 
Um, as we said before, it's it's definitely harder than it was before. I, I again, I've only started in the last few years, so I don't have the whole history of like I could go into any flea market and pick up GameCube games for a dollar, like <laughs> which is kind of nice because I'm not like oh the golden years are gone. <laughs> um, but I think there there are a lot of tools and resources out there that you can use if you are looking to build your collection on a budget. Um, so the first one was uh, join regional collector groups on Facebook. Mm -hmm. If you guys aren't in those already, it's huge being able to like meet people in person, like like uh, for example, kind of like a Facebook Marketplace deal, right? Like if you have something that uh, is a double for you or you're looking to get rid of and someone else posts something that is like your grail or something that you're missing for the collection, you go meet up, exchange numbers, hey, this is the other stuff I'm looking for. The more people you can kind of have in your network that know the kind of stuff that you're looking for, suddenly it's not just you trying to build your collection, it's multiple people. Because chances are you're gonna come across doubles or stuff that you're not really passionate about that they're going to want as well. So the more people you kind of have on your team in your area, that can dramatically increase your odds of success. It's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you ever like done deals or uh, like trades or leverage relationships in the past for collection stuff? I have. I'm a part of uh, there's an internet group in Heaven Phoenix where I live. I'm a part of. I haven't done any deals on there, but it's it's good to get tips and kind of where to find stuff for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and that's a great advice. Yeah. 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 My second one is if you're looking to um, like buy collections as a way of increasing your own collection or um, even if you're looking for specific console games, posting uh, ads on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, like in local Facebook groups of what you're looking for, can be really helpful. I know like there are other people out there doing it, but I've gotten a surprising number of responses of people saying, hey, are you interested in this? Are you interested in this? And you know, sometimes they might be like, are you interested in my broken Xbox 360? <laughs> you know, and we have to sift through some of those, but um, in general, I found you definitely get some results. This is, it's kind of tied to my last tip of let as many people as possible know what you're looking for, whether it's out at yard sales or it's on your basketball team or, you know, your church group, whatever. Say, hey, I collect video games and I'm willing to pay for them. And uh, that can be a great way to not only increase your own collection, but give you some of that surplus to use as trade with other people to get the stuff that you really want. One man's job is another one's treasure, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the whole name of our game. Yeah, that's that's good. I mean, it's just word of mouth, getting the word out there. I love that. So, yeah. Cool. Go ahead. Did you have something else? Um, not at the moment. <laughs> okay, I've got. To piggyback off of that last one, this is one that um, you may not hear all that often, but I would say if you are dealing with someone, it's it's one thing if you're at a yard sale or something like that, um, some place where you're not likely to ever go again. Normally the goal is going to be get this stuff as cheap as possible. My somewhat counterintuitive advice would be if you're dealing with someone who you're going to deal with again, like maybe you're in a pawn shop or you're um, like at a local video game store or regional video game store, you're meeting up with a local collector to buy something, pay well. Because you want to be known to them as the kind of person who will pay up for the kind of stuff that you're looking for. Now I'm not saying don't pay above like retail, but like, don't go in and lowball these people because if they end up going away from that transaction thinking, man, that guy paid me a little bit more than I expected, they're gonna come back. And those that repeat business, business, right? Maybe you're looking to flip some of the collections and maybe you're looking to put most of it in your own collection, but the repeat offenders that you're able to drum up by exceeding their expectations can be way more valuable than saving 10 or 20 bucks on an individual game. I, I will say this, I do feel like the Switch has like an open doors for other new collectors in the market, mm. you know, because it brought, very much I think it brought back. Nintendo's did a good job, like just bringing them back, bringing that feel back with like the cart, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I talked to a lot of new collectors who were collecting Switch. I've got Switch. It's a great system to play for, right? But you know, I think Nintendo's smart because they're marketing towards like a different audience than those who are playing like the modern like PC games, right? I mean, I could cover both. I do both, but uh, they 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 definitely narrowed down their audience for sure. Nintendo, yeah. Good job. Man. Kids are uh, twin boys are eight, and the first game they ever played was Super Mario Brothers, right? Getting the young, and I love that because I feel like it's getting younger, um, and I think it's great. It's keeping life. I kind of compare like gaming to like the comic industry, right? Where people are collectors and comics, mm -hmm. or like to, uh, I mean, basically Pokemon cards are going crazy right now. 
Yeah, I mean, Target's not even selling any Pokemon. Are you Target selling Pokemon? Um, online? Yeah, you know, like, because people are fighting over each other, literally. Yeah. You know, and like when McDonald's did the uh, Pokemon uh, Kids Meal, Happy Meal, mm -hmm. like, people want to eat that one. It was crazy. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like people are um, still passionate, and that's why I love going to events like this, because we all have a common, you know, passion for, for gaming. I think uh, people, I think, are overall pretty respectful for the most part. You get some sour grapes and some bad. Yeah, that batch, but for the most part, what do you think? Well, I've only been in it a few years. The only the only negative side of the collecting community that I've experienced a little bit of is um, there there tends to be not tends to be every once in a while you'll have someone who uh, has been in it for a long time and I think is a little bit sour about how things have become harder. Um, and oftentimes they will pin the blame for that on people like me. Yeah, I forgot. Like that. the resellers. Uh, you know, or YouTubers, you, like influencers, like, you know, like, yeah, talk about the family. Like, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you are showing people how to do this, you are doing it yourself, you are seeing video games just as, like, money-making tools. Yeah. Um, and, I, and on one hand, I, I'm empathetic to that, because I can see how, like, this hobby that you have grown up with, you know, and love so much, it, it would be hard to see it become more difficult. Yeah. Um, I would say that the reason for that primarily is because the demand has gone up so much yeah. rather than and granted part of that probably is due to YouTube and people sharing that passion in the same reason for the same reason that it's going up in comics and Pokemon and all this pop culture stuff because when people can share that and it's so accessible via the internet of course more people are going to get interested in it. it's, just, it's awesome. I feel like there's a difference between a gamer and a collector. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can be both don't get me wrong but I feel mm -hmm. like there's people out there like or gamers who like want to go out and find a game because they really want to play the game and legit want to play. And then there's like collectors out there who are just like, oh, it's worth that much. Let me look on eBay and see how much you can flip this for, you know, and uh -huh. try to make, make it, you know, try to make it like stock and try to make money on it. Like, I, outside the Pokemon game, I just sold, like, I haven't really sold any of my fashion, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's a big difference too, you know. And I think the attitude and the mindset is, is interesting too. Yeah. I would say, like, if I could talk to someone who does feel a little bit more. Um, hostile towards resellers, I would just say, like, like get to know them a little bit, because oftentimes, and people actually mean different things, too, like, I, I consider myself very much in the same camp as, like, any of the vendors next door, right? Like, they're buying video games for one price and selling them for another, and a lot of them, you know, probably have their own collections, I have my collection. Um, I think the, the idea that if you make money on video games you uh like are a bad person or you have less respect for the hobby is what i would take most issue with and i would say most resellers if you get to know them like if you go to your local flea markets right and you see like the people with the vendor booth set up and you're there regularly and you like get to know these people they'll give you deals you know like they're not they're not all about the money they'll hook up their friends too yeah. and also they want to move product but they also have a food to put on their plate, uh, you know, roof over their head, you know, so we have to make a living on it too. So it's no different than any other industry, to be honest with you. I mean, really, yeah. that's how I see it. Um, yeah. And you know, people get mad at sellers for like, oh, flip it, but we sell this for three times the cost. Just gonna, I get mad at the buyers. It's all about supply and demand. Right? Right. Man, it's, it's the buyer's fault for driving up that, that the demand for it. Mm -hmm. If no one's going to pay that price, then they're going to drop the price. Yeah. Yeah, to be honest, there's there's always some element for me of a little bit of insecurity when I come to events like this because I know there are going to be some people there that are in kind of that like old school mindset of like if you're in making money on video games, you're kind of the bad guy. Yeah. Um, I saw those people with the big signs in front of Caleb's. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I would. The way I look at it is like I celebrate when someone's able to take something that they really love and like make an income out of it. I think that's really cool, and that's why I try to teach people to do it, whether it's like a side thing or you know something that people are trying to do full time. I think there's a lot of beauty in that. There's nothing wrong in making money. Nothing wrong. All right, let's go through the pickups now since we're in our last clip of the video here. You may notice we're in a different hotel room. Um, <laughs> We actually had to move last night. There was an incident in our room. And by incident, I mean there was a mouse. So Kathleen went to the front desk and told them, and they gave us a different room in the hotel. 
So that's good. So we'll move on from that point now and talk. Before we get to the pickups, I just want to say the convention first day, or well, technically it's its second day because it starts on Friday, but um, we just do Saturday and Sunday, um, was excellent. Um, it seemed to be a little bit smaller than normal, but that's probably because of, of, of COVID. Uh, you know, they probably planned for maybe a smaller event and just spread it out a little bit more, I think was what they were doing, um, which is totally fine with me. Um, or maybe they're just, you know, maybe some people just didn't come back um, this for this year. Um, they're, they're, I don't know if there was really le uh, less of a crowd. Um, maybe it seemed like it a little bit going around the vendor hall. Like there wasn't like huge crowds around all the tables. Although we went in a little early because if you pre-purchased a ticket, you could actually go in at 930. If you were did the VIP package, you could actually go in at 9. And then everyone else who bought a ticket the day of went in at 10. So going around the vendor hall, everything was great. Um, good prices on stuff. Um, when we were going around the vendor hall, I had basically, I was trying to say, let's stick to everything $20 and under. And I think after I peeled off all the price tags, the most expensive game I bought was $20. Uh, so I stuck to that. I also, when I go here, I don't look really for handheld games. I, I'm, I collect handheld games, but I'm not much of a handheld gamer. I stick more to consoles, so I wasn't really looking for those. And for one of the first times, I was not looking for, like, Nintendo or Super Nintendo. And there's Kathleen. But I like handheld games. Yeah, Kathleen was looking for DS games. Every time we went to the table, one of the new vendors that we were walking around seeing, she was right over, I was at the DS, 3DS, where I was, like, pointing, my, hey, there's the DS games over there, go look at them. <laughs> so, yeah, um, going around, looking at everything. I was not looking for, like, Nintendo, because most of the stuff I'm looking for there... A few games are high-end games, so I was not trying to get those. Same with Super Nintendo. Genesis, they're more high-end. There was only a couple that I was looking for that were not on the high-end. I did not find those games, though. Mostly, it was looking for games from N64, basically, to PS3. I wasn't looking for PS4, Xbox One, either. Um... I think just because of the fact a lot of people might still overprice those games a little bit. I noticed that at game stores. I'm not sure if it was like that in the vendor hall. I just, I just, yeah, Kathleen says maybe a little bit. I wasn't looking at them particularly for that reason. Um, and plus, looking for PS4 and Xbox One games right now, you can still pretty much find those a lot in stores. So I was looking for stuff more. You're not going to maybe find as much of these games in stores as you do so because i found some dreamcast games ps1 gamecube games today too stuff that like i said you're not more than likely to find stores you could walk into you know any of these local gaming stores and find probably ps4 and xbox one games um switch games we didn't really look for those either today and n64 i only picked up one game a lot of those kind of a few of them are more high-end games i'm looking for so particularly it was like kind of more like ps1 on up got one plushie to actually complete our plushie collection that we're looking for um so that's good of all the characters that we want to get so that was good and did find in one nintendo power magazine as well um i really wasn't looking for those coming into the convention i didn't look for any boxes or manuals either um but heck, heck one guy had a few magazines out bought one um that and it was a good price on it um, bought one to add to the collection. So, yep, that was great. I'm walking around the whole the whole vendor hall the whole time wondering, where's John Riggs? Looking for him, like, at every, every spot. Like, looking around, can I see him? Can I hear his voice? Can I hear somebody mentioning his name? And, like I said, going to lunch, saw him, got a picture with him, and saw Caleb uh, from Phoenix. The, he's, he's the one from the Phoenix Resale Channel. And got a picture with him also and listen to his panel later on and in fact you just saw those clips uh, of that um i filmed just a few clips in, in there uh, of him and um john and i forgot his last name who he was doing the panel with talking about tips and tricks while game hunting so that was really uh fun and interesting to hear and we walked around you know saw us play played some games um and that was it. And the next video you'll see is us playing games and walking around the video game 
kind of museum area, playing arcade games, playing computer games, and playing. Played duck hunt. Yep. Duck hunt for the first time. Yep. Pl Kathleen plays some duck hunt. We play that together, and then we'll play some uh, a little bit of pinball in there too. And that's it, it'll be a shorter video tomorrow. So <laughs> this clip's already been like five minutes. I haven't showed anything yet. So why don't we get started? So the one plushie that I was still looking for out of any characters that, that we wanted. So this completes any one we found. We found Diddy Kong yesterday, which was at disc replay and got Princess Daisy. Finally found one um, that we saw t vendors with plushies and I was really happy to finally see this. Like I asked Kathleen to, to look for one of them to see if they had it. They did, and I actually found Daisy at another vendor later on that was closer to the front, but we got it from um, these, this, um, I, I think it's a couple at least that owns the game mm -hmm. store. Yes. Okay, Kathleen. Uh, green. They're, they're from Bowling Green, Bowling green Ohio. Ohio, and they actually said they came up to Michigan recently and started at like Fremont, worked their way south and stopped at some video game stores, and they actually mentioned some that I had been to, so that was pretty cool having that little connection there. I think, yes, I put some cards over here to actually mention some people um, at the end of this little video mm -hmm. about um, stuff that I can talk about that some vendors we bought from. Kathleen got some Amiibo cards here. <laughs> We're not actually sure if we have yeah, any of these I yet. Yeah, I forgot to um, write mine down that I have previously. Yeah, we. so, <laughs> so some of these we might have actually already have, but we got uh, Tom Nook, Sherry... Blathers, Blathers. Uh, Col Colton, Col yep, uh, Cheddar, Cheddar. I know we don't have that. Isabella, a and then Isabel, which is more of a sparkly one. So yeah, we found some amiibo cards, and the only other time I found those was at a disc okay. traders over in Battle Creek. What? You just put them out of order. Oh, I mixed them out of order. That's great. All right, that one was last, and then we got that, 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 and that. Okay, now they're all back in order, and I'll give them to Kathleen so she can take care of them now <laughs> before I put them I'm out of order. I'm very picky on how my cards go in order. And then <laughs> Kathleen bought a Midwest Gaming Classic shirt. To wear next year? Yeah. I did not buy one. <laughs> I figure, hey, I'm there. I, I got the experience. I got the memories like that and meeting people, but, you know, Kathleen got a shirt. <laughs> so I'll give that to Kathleen, too. And then I showed this already at lunchtime, but I'll show it again. She got an Animal Crossing puzzle. This was actually from the booth where I found the Daisy, the second location where I found a Daisy at, because I'm just looking around in the background, like looking at all the plushies. So, yep, it's a thousand piece puzzle for Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> all right, now we'll get to the games. Well, we'll get to my one Nintendo Power Magazine first. And this is a. Super Mario Bros. 3 strategy, guys. So I, this is like one of my favorite games. So I'm really happy to get the, to get this. Um, I think so far on this trip, actually, we got like seven Nintendo Power magazines. I wasn't actually thinking about getting any, but heck, when you see them, you you know you get some. And there were some at a store, like I said, I just I passed on. Um, you know, the prices were just a little too high for me. I'm sure like they might go up in price, um, and I should have bought them, but. I was like, Caleb actually talked about this today at um, during his tips and tricks. He said, if you really want that item, you're going to just pay for it no matter what the price is. But sometimes it's best just to let it let it go and get it a different time, and you might find it for cheaper. So maybe I'll find those ones for cheaper later on. Who knows? Um, they also like just a few minutes later, I saw like a graded version of this at a different booth. So. <laughs> That was interesting. It was not like a nine point grade, it was more like a 7.5 grade. Um, this one, as you can see, has a little bit of a missing corner on it, but oh well. But yeah, I'm gonna read that one over, definitely see if I maybe missed any secrets to that game because even with older games today, people still find things that you didn't find for years. All right, so I got one N64 game and uh, this one has a really good label to it, so I'm really happy about that, and that is Tetrisphere. Um, I saw like a couple of different copies of this at other booths. Didn't have a great label, so I passed on it. Found one later though for that. Got that one for about 10 bucks. Kathleen got a, like I said, she got some DS games. She got three. Um, Professor Layton and the Unwound Future. 
um, Hidden Mysteries Buckingham Palace. That's gonna look fun. And then this one we saw at Treasure Quest before, but it didn't. It was not complete, so we passed on it because of that. And we found a complete copy today, and that's USA Today Puzzle Craze, which yeah. I'll just mention it now. This guy that we bought it from has a YouTube channel called DC Capades, or DS Capades, not DC, DS Capades. And he likes to review a lot of, like, DS games that people really aren't talking about. So if you want to check him out, go ahead. It's DS Escapades on YouTube. All right, there you go, Kathleen. This is taking forever for her to take him out of my hand. No, Michael, I have to put that... I had the switch in my hand. So the guys that we bought the the Daisy Flesh from, we also did buy one game from them as well. Um, I'll see if I can remember which one it is. Oh yeah, I bought. Uh, I think I can tell you. Oh, it's not here. Did you put it in? Oh man, I wonder if I paid for it next time I left the game behind. Oh. Oh, oh boy. Um. Anyways, I bought the game Casper from them, and I, yeah, I maybe in a rush I accidentally left it. That ain't good. <laughs> so that was that game was about thirteen bucks. Well, I actually have to go back to the vendor hall and see if they're still there tomorrow and talk to them about that because <laughs> I did did actually pay for it. <laughs> um, anyways, the guys are Rock'em Sock'em Retro, and they're located in Bowling Green, Ohio. So there you go if you want to check them out. And they do have a website, Rock'em Sock'em Retro dot com on there. I can't believe it if I did forget that game. I don't see it on this side. Yay! <laughs> that's a, that's a first oh, for me. It was Casper for PS1. PS1. I do remember that because I was like, well, I want to get a game too besides the plushie. And that was like the one game I found there I was looking for. I think I actually did add it to my collection and my app too. So I'll have to check that out. All right. So next I got a couple of PS3 games. Um, first I'll show this one, Little League World Series 2010, uh, nothing special there, and then I've been looking for this to get it on PS3 for a while, I had it on I think 360, and that is Sonic Generations, you can see for that one I paid $13.99, I tried not to like overpay for anything on mine, I paid maybe a couple bucks over for that, but nothing, I don't see it over nothing bad. On yeah, I left it there. Gosh dang it. <laughs> Alright, moving on. PS1 Things now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love getting the Disney games, even if they're like a movie I haven't seen. But I did recently see this a couple of years ago. It's a good yeah, movie. Oh, finally, a couple of years ago, I guess. And that's A Bug's Life. And the movie is excellent. So and I like the movie. and looking for this game before, always see greatest hits, never see Black Label. So, happy to get that. Speaking of never seeing Black Label, Sonic Mega Collection for GameCube. Never see that Black Label. And the times I found it today, Missing oh, a Manual yep. or Water Damaged Artwork were the only times I saw it. And I was like, nope, not yep. getting it. Alright, then the other Disney game I got was The Little Mermaid 2. And then, I never saw this cartoon as a kid because I did not have cable or satellite. And that's Rugrats, but I was always no. I was always <laughs> attracted to it, I guess. Um, especially the second one in here. Um, but I got Rugrats Studio Tour. And I saw Rugrats when, uh, when I was a kid, but that's because I had cable. Yeah, and then the other one, this was actually the first <laughs> Rugrats game I owned, but it was Greatest Hits, so I actually ended up getting rid of it because of that. But I was glad to find a black label version today, and that was Rugrats Search for Reptar. And then, for the last PS1 game, I got this because really because of the lenticular cover of it. And, oh, and I don't have it for my collection either, in Black Label as well. And that's Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, so maybe you can see that lenticular cover there. Um, still looking for the Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. I Obviously, I saw that one today. That's not too hard of, to find game. But if I do find it, I think they have the lenticular cover for that, so I'd like to find it like that as well. Alright, for PS2 games now, um, got Looney Tunes back in action. I like playing uh, cartoon games, obviously you can tell by 
you know, Rugrats or the Disney ones. Um, got one racing game, and that's V Rally 3. Never see that game. Um, I got Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. Now, <laughs> I didn't notice this while buying it, but there's a Blockbuster label on the back here, and it's actually on the artwork. And oh, so I'm, awesome. I don't know how I didn't reckon realize that was there. I guess I was just happy to see this one. I think so. You were too. So, and because I was like, oh, Sly Cooper, and I looked at it probably mm -hmm. like that. Opened it up, looked at the manual, was like, okay, let's let's get it. So I'm definitely gonna want to upgrade that because I don't want to have that on the artwork. Um, I'm not even gonna try to peel it because it's gonna, just gonna peel the artwork right off. Um, I found a black label Star Wars Battlefront. Never seem to find it, that one black label. It's greatest hits if you see it. And in this one, usually you see the PlayStation um, 1 uh, version of this, not the PlayStation 2. And that's Army Men Sarge's Heroes 2. Love playing the Army Men series. Even if it is not really sophisticated, I would say, and the games are not that great. But I enjoy them. <laughs> and that's what matters. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to Wii now. Um, got three games, all animated movie games. Surprise, right? No. G Force, which actually I haven't even seen that movie. <laughs> you haven't seen G Brave, yeah. which also I have not seen, but oh, what the heck? Oh, Let's. Oh, so, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to play these games before I even see the movie. This one I have. I call you guys see the movie. This one, this one I have seen, obvious, obviously, but I have. <laughs> Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. So, yes. Yeah. All right. Then I got three GameCube games. Um, two came from the same vendor. And that would be Curious George, which this one now is over a $10 game. I thought this was under 10 until I looked it up to see what it was. So, and yes, I am going to play that. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, found a Spongebob game. I'm trying to get most of the Spongebob games. And I got Spongebob Squarepants, Creature from the Krusty Krab. I always find the Wii version of this. Never find the GameCube version, it seems like. And then I used to have this game, but it was like sun... The, like the cover was sun faded and everything. And I don't think I had the manual with it. And that's probably why I sold off. But I found a complete copy again, Die Hard Vendetta really unusual to find a shooter on the GameCube and really I think this was only really I mean it does not have it only for GameCube up in the corner so maybe it's released for PC but I don't think it was released on any other console and then the last three games I'm saving saved here were all Dreamcast games that's right I found three Dreamcast games um, I think the first one here I actually found cheaper at another vendor but I ended up getting it from so I think it was like one of the last ones I got, and I paid maybe five dollars more. Sega GT, love the racing games. That's what these all are. This was actually this one came from the first vendor we went to, and they had it for like twelve bucks. And later on, I saw it like priced at like twenty dollars at another vendor, so I was glad I got it when I did. And that is Vanishing Point, and you see this more for PlayStation than you do for Dreamcast. And then finally, I find a. A regular copy of this game, not the Sega All-Stars copy. That's what I always seem to find. That's Crazy Taxi. Got that one. This was, like I said, the, the most expensive I paid. That was twenty dollars for it. And that, and the like, the Vanishing Point game, and I think the Sonic one as well came from Respawn Retro Video. That was the first booth we stopped at. They had a lot of Japanese games as well. And then, yeah, and then uh, a couple other ones that we bought some games from. We got Onet Gaming. They're located in Ottawa, Illinois. And I think the one I, the guy I bought SpongeBob and Curious George was from is Universal Collectibles, which is in Menominee Falls, um, Wisconsin. Oh. There you go. And then these guys I didn't buy anything from, but they gave me their business card, and maybe you guys will want to check them out. It's Dark Fusion Systems, LLC. They can help you build a custom PC for you for gaming or, you know, just to have a PC. So there you go. That's the pickups for this. I'm hoping that Casper game is still there tomorrow, that, that they realized I bought that and walked off. Um, if not, it went back in the bin and... 
I paid yeah, him and it's, it yeah, I, I paid him it's, and someone else got it and paid for it. If that happened, that's my fault. Oh, well. So drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed today meeting everybody, having a lot of fun. Kathleen and I had a lot of fun. It was great. So subscribe if you haven't. And Mikey Screwed, you guys all take care. We'll see you in the next video.